Friday. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Welcome to the Friday Curry Club. Um, we are cooking some yummy food again today. I hope you're all well, first of all. I hope everyone is in a good place. Yeah, it's been a little bit tricky, I know. Another, another week of lockdown. Um, so I just thought I'd bring you these little um, curry clubs just to get you cooking, just to get you a little bit of information when it comes to food and how you put these dishes together. Um, all I'll ask is that you say hello, tell me where you're tuning in from. It'd be great to get lots of feedback from you guys. Um, it's a great opportunity for you guys to ask questions and I will try and answer them as quickly and as easily as I can. Um, let me know if you're cooking with me. Let me know if you're just watching. Um, but please do interact and say hello. Tell me where you're from. So let's get those sort of messages coming through so I can say hello to you all. Um, another tricky week. It's been a bit bizarre, I know, but I hope everybody's well and I hope you're all at home and I hope you're staying in and I hope you're staying safe. Um, it's been um, a fun week. I've done lots of cooking. I've done lots of um, food from around the world. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I'm trying to do this little bit about different dishes from different parts of the world. So if you've got anything you would like me to try, drop me a little note on Instagram and let me know and I will try and include that in my weekly cooking. We've got lots of food from all around the world. Benidorm. Hi Bahamas. everyone. We've got people from the Bahamas, from Benidorm, South Africa, Boston, South Italy, Africa, Italy Tread Boston. Globe, Tread Hi, Tread the Globe. Day Good to 30. have you um, join us again. I know that you were on day 30. I saw your um, Facebook post earlier and you were having a little a little drink to celebrate rather than commiserate, which is always lovely. And obviously, yeah, I forgot to say, it's Friday. So I hope you've all got a little, a little something, a little glass. I've got my Prosecco as always. Um, I just want to say a big cheers to everybody for joining and saying hello. Who else have we got then? Uh, Sue Gein is Hi Not Sue, sure. lovely um, to see you. On her sofa with a glass of wine. Oh good, I'm glad you've got some wine with you. That's always good. Who else have we got? We've got people from Ottawa. Mich um, people from, from Ottawa? Ottawa. Hi. Quebec, Cape Town, Quebec, Thailand. Thailand, wow. Who's from Thailand? Uh, Robert Claire. Hi Robert from Thailand. Amazing to have you join us. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you are well. I hope you Maya. are enjoying your day so far. Maya's from Dallas. Texas. Hi, Maya from Dallas. Wow, from Dallas. Denmark. Denmark. We've got people from all over the globe. It's amazing. I'm so thrilled to have you all join in and you know tune in and take a little bit of your your Friday to to spend with me. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Harry Gotra. Um, I do this kind of stuff. I've got um, lots of food and, and ideas that I love to share with you guys. So please take a look, obviously, on the YouTube channel, but also on the website. There's loads of stuff that will hopefully, while you're sort of all on lockdown, give you some ideas and inspiration to cook for your families and, and, and try new things. Um, oh, Luke from France. Hello. How are you doing? DC Morris, you have started a little bit of a trend with your pulley um, onion chopper that you sent me. So thank you for that. There have been people on the app who have gone out and bought them. They are brilliant. So thank you for sharing that with me. OK, so today we are cooking a lamb Rogan Josh. Um, it's a very classic restaurant style dish. It's one of those dishes that's got a little bit of a kick to it. Um, and it's loved in the UK and it's one of those takeaway dishes, it's one of those restaurant dishes. It, its origins come from the Kashmir region, which is up in the north of India. And a classic Kashmiri Rogan Josh is very, very different to what you would expect to get from a takeaway. So the style that I'm going to show you today is very much that Kashmiri style. And it's a very distinctive style in, in, in the way that um, they produce their food and produce this particular dish. Over the years, and as that dish has travelled around the world, it has taken on lots of different guises and lots of different forms. But a classic Rogan Josh is a very simple dish. Roughly translated, 
Rogan um, means, so in Hindi it means red, um, in Persian it means in oil, um, and Josh, the word Josh or Josh means um, with passion. So it's a red, passionate, fiery dish, and that's what I'm going to show you how to make today. Okay, so just going through the ingredients that I've got. Um, please let me know if you're cooking with me because then I will sort of try and keep you or keep myself at the same pace that you guys are going. She says it's time for a drink break. Hello, Mr. G. Time for a drink break already. I said I've got one. Cheers. Okay, so lamb. I'm cooking with lamb today and my cut of choice is a lamb neck fillet because... It's got a lovely bit of fat running through it and it just tenderises really, really beautifully. It's got a lovely flavour to it. Um, so I like to use um, neck fillet for a lot of my lamb dishes, even the low, slow cooked lamb dishes. It just works really well. Great flavour, as I said. Um, if, obviously, you are a vegetarian or vegan, um, there are different things that you can do with this dish. It works really well with quite robust vegetables, so aubergines, you can use nice big chunky mushrooms, you could use tofu, um, cauliflower, that kind of thing. It works really well with that. So there's, with Indian food in particular, there's lots of alternatives that you can use. You don't always have to go step by step by that recipe that, that, is, that you're going, um, that you're following. You can sort of tweak it and add other bits and pieces in there. So we've got some lamb. Um, and then I'm just going to talk you very quickly through the dry spices that I'm using. So I've got some um, Kashmiri chilies. These little chilies, they're not so little, they are quite big. They look quite potent, but actually Kashmiri chilies aren't that hot. They've got a lovely smoky flavour, but what they do have is an amazing colour to them. So we're going to be using some whole Kashmiri chilies. I'm also going to be using some Kashmiri chilli powder as well. And then the other bits that I've got in here, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I've got some cumin seeds. I'm gonna take them out actually so that I can show you better. So cumin seeds, which look like this, the long, thin brown ones. I've got some cassia bark, which is this stuff. And it's very similar in its aromatic to cinnamon, but it's much sweeter. And it's the outer bark of the cassia tree. Then we've got green cardamom. Let me just pull that out. So it's got that lovely bittersweet. Can you see those? Now with green cardamom, ideally you want them to be green and not gray and old and dusty. And you pull them out from the back of your spice cupboard. They should really be green. Um, Jim's asking, how long can you keep the spices in the cupboard? Hi Jim, um, in terms of your spices and how long you store them for, my general rule of thumb is if you store them correctly, i.e. away from a heat source, away from direct light, and if they're in their whole state, they will stay, they should stay fine for 9 to 12 months. Um, ground spice is more like 6 to 9 months, but I always say use your senses when it comes to spices. If they smell right, if they look right, if they look the right colour, then they should be okay. Um, we've got some cloves, and I don't know if very many of you will have used these. These are, who knows what those are? I was just about to say. So these are black cardamom. Black cardamom, uh, it's a different plant from green cardamom, but if you smell them, they've got really smoky, really lovely aromatic to them, and they just sit in the back of the dish and release their aromatics. So those are my dry spices. The other dry spice is this stuff. Um, can you see? It's like a yellow powder. This is asafoetida, um, and it comes from, it's the gel or the sap that's dried from a fennel-like plant, and it's got the same sort of flavour profile as garlic and onion. So that's what we use to get those flavours in here you will see that we're not using any onion or garlic in this dish at all. And that's very classically a Kashmiri style of cooking. Um, so we're gonna be using asafoetida. The other two key spices which are key from this region are fennel powder, which is slightly green, and then we've got ginger powder. So these two spices are absolutely key in this sort of 
um, Kashmiri style of cooking. Okay, so those are the bits that I'm going to use. Is everybody still with me? Everyone still happy? Any more questions coming in? Anything I need to answer before I get going? Um, the other key part of this dish is the oil that we use. So this is mustard oil. And I get asked a lot about mustard oil. Um, in the EU, in the UK, in the US, whenever you buy mustard oil, or the majority of the oil that you buy, it will say on there for external use only. And there is a reason for that. And I've done a whole blog on it. So if you go to the website and look for my mustard oil blog, it will tell you all about it. But basically, there was some research done on it many, many years ago, back in the 70s. And um, the oil is deemed unfit for human consumption. Um, a lot of Indian people will continue to use it. It comes from the same sort of plant. So it's basically mustard seeds that have been pressed and that's the oil that we use. Um, and it's got a real bite to it. It's got a bit of a kick to it. So we tend to use it in lots of sort of veggie dishes. So aloo gobi, potatoes and cauliflower, uh, Bombay potatoes, that kind of thing. It just gives it a real oomph. Um, Sue's asking, is I've fennel got powder ground fennel seeds? Fennel powder is ground fennel seeds, absolutely. It's exactly the same thing. So it's just fennel seeds that have just been blitzed up to get a nice powder. Yeah. Someone's using, Gab, uh, Gabriel's using onions instead of acetabula. Should he start frying them now? Yes, so stop. If, if you are using onions, which is absolutely fine, start, get them on, start frying them so that they can cook down and you get a little bit of a, a, a nice sort of brown colour from them. So yeah, if you are using onions, get those on. Um, so just back to the mustard oil, you can now buy edible mustard oil. So if you can find it, brilliant. Um, if you can't find it, I can guarantee you that all of the mustard oil that you get in shops, Indian people are still cooking with it. And what we tend to do whenever we cook with mustard oil is we will put it into a pan and we'll bring that pan up to smoking point. And what that does is it just gets rid of any of those impurities that are in that oil. Um, and then we let it cool down and then we continue to cook with it. Um, it's got high levels of a specific acid, which is uricic acid i was trying to remember what it was called not uric uricic acid and that acid is deemed to have a negative effect on your heart or so the research says but this research was so old it's never been re sort of tested or looked at again so rather than re-looking at the oil they've just deemed it unfit for human consumption so it's up to you if you do not want to use mustard oil that's absolutely fine a really good alternative is rapeseed oil um, it comes from the same sort of plant so just use rapeseed oil or if you don't have anything just use whichever oil you've got any vegetable oil is absolutely fine so i am just put my oil in there and I'm just going to let that come up to smoking and then I'm going to let it cool down before I add my spices so if you've got any other questions about all of those bits, I know there's a lot of information there, please keep those questions coming in and let me know if there's anything specific you want me to go through. So the process is, once my oil has heated and then cooled again, I'm going to first of all add some asafoetida to that. Now asafoetida has got a really strong acrid aromatic to it, it's really quite potent. Um, and it's not the most pleasant aroma when you start to cook with it, but that, uh, as you cook it and as that sort of um, cooks through, that, that aromatic sort of dissipates and, and passes. So um, be careful when you're using this. The other thing that I will say is that you don't need a lot of it. So probably about a quarter of a teaspoon in the amount that I'm cooking today is going to be more than enough. So I'm just going to get that ready it is pretty stinky we call this hing um, so if you see a recipe where it says hing it means asafoetida so my pan is just coming up to smoking now and I'm just going to turn that down and let that cool off before I start the actual cooking so how many have we got that are actually cooking with us let me know if you are cooking. Let me know if you're just watching just to see um, what's going on today. Got a 
few people. Apocalypse is ready to cook. Um, Sambo. Hi, called. Apocalypse. I hear you're ready to cook, which is very exciting. Um, so I hope you're sort of, you've got all the ingredients that you needed. Is anybody doing anything a little bit different? So rather than lamb, are you using other ingredients? Let me know. Tell me what you're using because it'd be, it's just really nice to share and for other people to see what you're doing. The other thing that would work really well is um, thigh fillets would work really well with this as well. So you oh, can Phillips use chicken. Using, they're using chicken instead of them. Ah, so you are using chicken. Lovely. Good to know. Henrik's using potato tofu. Using potato tofu. Potatoes and tofu from Henrik. That's lovely. Mr. Jones is cooking homemade beef burgers. Mr. Jones is cooking homemade beef and burgers. Oh, yum. Well, it is Friday. You're allowed to drink lager, so that's all good. Um, so I'm just going to let this cool down. Now, be very careful at this point. Because you've heated up your oil and you're letting it cool down, if you put your spices in too soon, they will burn. So you need to be really careful and just make sure that the oil isn't too hot. Because if, if they start to sizzle and you start to burn those ingredients, you need to just get rid of them and start again. Um, let me know how you got on last week. Did anybody try the dish after um, after the live show? It would be really good to hear what you thought of it. And what's really lovely is if you want to, if you're whilst you're watching, if you want to take a few pictures and share them with me, it's amazing to see what you guys are up to as well. So please do take a few snaps. You can share them with me on the app or through social media. It's just really lovely to see what you guys are up to. So there we go. So that's. I think looking good. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back on. Mr. G is using onion, parsley, and chili. If you've been pressed, trust him. Mr. G, you sound like a whiz in the kitchen now. Can you, David's asking, can he substitute olive or vegetable oil? Um, absolutely. Use um, vegetable oil rather than olive oil because I don't think really think it's worth using olive oil. If you've got vegetable oil, use that instead. It's absolutely fine. Um, what's the difference between yellow and white things? It, I don't think there's much of a difference. It's just that, that they're slightly different plants, I think. But I think the aromatics that you get from them are pretty much the same. So that's looking good. And the other thing that you'll notice with mustard oil is it does have an aroma to it. It's quite a unique, quite a different aroma. So we are going to start cooking now. So I've got my oil it's feeling about right first thing i'm going to do is add my asafoetida so i'm just going to add in about a quarter of a teaspoon and that will sizzle straight away and then into that go my chilies my cassia my brown or cardamom is canola oil okay canola oil is fine that's actually rapeseed oil anyway so yeah that's absolutely fine my cumin seeds are going in I'm just going to start to turn this up so that they start to sizzle. I'm just going to give my cardamom a crack and just put those in as well. Now, when you are toasting your spices at this stage, so this is your base spice stage. And when you are toasting your spices, all you are hoping for is the aromatics to just start to come through. You're just getting those natural oils that are in those spices to come through. And, and as soon as you smell it, and I always say this, this is one of my key things, as soon as you smell those aromatics, you know that the oil has done its job in releasing the aromatics. So I'm just going to very quickly show you what it looks like. Can you see? Ah, it's really hot. I should probably use a tea towel. I know I've got asbestos hands, but... Let's use a tea towel, just for safety. There we go. Okay, so we're going to continue to let that cook on there. Now, rogan, as I said in Persian, it means to fry in oil. So we're going to add our meat straight into there. And this is where it's very different. In its style of cooking, so we're toasting those spices and that meat together. Um, why is it do not crack the black cardamom? Does it matter? Do you need to? So with the black cardamom, 
They are slightly bigger. You can crack them, but actually all they're there to do is just release their aromatics very gently into the back of that dish. So I just tend not to do it. You don't really need to. They'll, they'll add what you want them to add very, very slowly as that dish cooks through. And can you just repeat what cut of lamb you're using? So the cut of lamb that I am using, and it's my favourite cut of lamb, it's a neck fillet, so it's, um, it's really tender, it's got a nice bit of fat running through it. If you get a whole um, neck fillet, they, you, can, you can toast them in spices and you can cook them very, very quickly and you can slice them really beautifully and they make a really lovely, um, you know, you can tandoori them or whatever, but it, they cook very, you can sear it and cook it really quickly or you can chop it up and also use it in curries and stews and things and it's just a really nice cut of lamb okay so we're just searing our meat in that pan with the oil with those spices and you will start to smell that really lovely aromatic that's coming from them and it also looks really nice can you cook this with what sorry you could make them the sauce you could make the um, sauce without putting the fish in finish that sauce off and then add your fish at a later uh, a later point you don't really want to be overcooking your fish this is um slightly more of a low slow style so you just need to choose your ingredients carefully Okay, it smells lovely. I'm going to show you what mine looks what like again. Pardon? So I've got this on high so that you get a little bit of heat to that meat and it starts to cook through. Okay, now into this. We are going to add those other very key ingredients. Let that do its thing. I just want to get a little bit of colour to it, so I'm going to leave it on for fairly high heat. Um, whilst that's doing that, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Now you season to it what suits your taste, so probably about a teaspoon. Can you use corn pieces? Say again? You can use corn, absolutely. There's no reason why you can't make this vegetarian, vegan, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. The full recipe, as I said, is on the app. It's also on the website. Um, I have got an, a video of it as well on YouTube, so you can have a look at that if that helps you to start cooking. Okay, so my meat's starting to get a little bit of colour to it. Into that, I'm going to add these two very key ingredients. So, as I said, fennel powder, which is just fennel seeds ground down, and ground ginger powder. So, they go in. And as I said, these are really key aromatics of this region. And then the rogan bit, the colour, is going to come from that chilli powder. So into that I'm going to add my Kashmiri chilli powder, which is going to give it this lovely red colour. And I'm going to be fairly heavy-handed with my chillies here. And you give that all a stir. And you will see straight away that the colour of that meat changes. And it just starts to look quite, quite beautiful. There we go. I'm going to show you the inside of my pan again, just so that you can get a bit of a feel for how it should look. Beautiful colour, really, really lovely. And that's just simmering away and it's going to do its thing. Jared's asking, what are the other names for fennel seeds? Oh, it's called Valerie. Val 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 Valerie, I think it's called, or Villery. 
um, is also so fennel fennel basically what fennel does is it gives it a lovely aniseedy flavor it's much more gentle than aniseed but it's that lovely aniseed flavor that you get from fennel um, and can you confirm so you heated the oil first and then you let it cool so just to so you want me to just go over what I've done and talk about like the temperatures that you left your pan out so to begin with I put in my oil I brought that up to smoking point and I let that then cool down um, and that's only if you're using mustard oil if you're using a different kind of oil you, you can miss that step out you just need to heat up your oil into that oil then I put in um, a teaspoon of cumin seeds I put in a couple of black cardamom I put a couple of green cardamom in I put some cloves in um, I put in my cassia bark which is like cinnamon um, and two Kashmiri chilies, so whole chilies. Um, once they were aromatic and started to get nice and toasted, I then added my meat. So I fried my meat off in that oil first. Um, once I got a little bit of colour to it, you then add your ginger powder, your fennel powder, and your chilli powder. And that's what gives it that rogan, that colour. The other spice that you can use is alkaline root, which again gives that red colour, but it doesn't really have a flavour. So if you can get hold of that, you can use that as well. But I, I prefer to just use Kashmiri chilli powder. Now, when you put dry powders into a dish like this, there is a little bit of a worry that, that, that it could burn. So you need to turn it down a little bit, um, which is what I've done now. And what will start to happen is the meat will start to render, it'll start to cook and all the fat will start to come through. And then what we are going to do is once we see a little bit of moisture starting to come through on that, I'm going to add, which is quite unusual, I guess, for a lot of people, um, I'm going to start to add some yogurt. So I've just got some Greek yogurt here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a spoonful at a time, just one spoon, and I'm going to put it in. And I'm going to very, very gently on a gentle heat, just start to mix that through until it starts to absorb. If you just chuck the whole lot in, it could split. So you just do one spoonful at a time and just start to mix that in. And you'll see that the spices won't catch because you've got it on a gentle heat. And then that is what is going to create this sauce. So this isn't a dish. As I said at the beginning, it's very different from a restaurant style um, Rogan Josh in that the sauce that you get from this is very... Um, thin it's a very thin sauce it's not a thick juicy um, sort of thick with onions and, and, and that base or flavor that a lot of curries are known for it's a very very different style um, of dish but it's really aromatic and really quite flavorsome so my meat is now starting to cook through and I'm going to start to add in just a tablespoon at a time of that yogurt. Can you um, talk about what way you can get cashmere chili powder, like authentic cashmere chili powder websites sold out at the moment? And that so cashmere chili powder is um, one of those amazingly beautiful things. Um, you, if you're lucky and you've got a good Indian grocery store close to you, you will probably find it in there. Um, if not. I do sell it on the website, so um, and we deliver worldwide, so you can order it from the website and we will get those orders out to you as quickly as we possibly can. Um, we are having a few problems at the moment, as you can imagine. Um, all I would say is when you are looking at or looking for Kashmiri chilli powder, look at the chilli powder that is in that packet. If it doesn't have that beautiful, vibrant red colour, it's probably not what you're looking for. The other alternative, and I have mentioned this a few times before, is if you cannot get hold of Kashmiri chilli powder, a really good alternative is to use half a smoked paprika and half a chilli, like a hot chilli powder, and mix the two up. And that will give you a very similar sort of colour and flavour. So as you start to add this yoghurt you will start to get a really thick, lovely creaminess coming through. I will show you the pan. 
and I will repeat actually, it's really, really, really important that you put in one spoonful at a time, stir it, let it absorb into the spices and the sauce, and then go in with the next one. So this is what you are looking for. It's creamy, it's red, and it's just really, really fragrant. So I'm going to continue to do that. You probably want about four yes. tablespoons a of the yogurt. Um, I've never tried it with a non-dairy yogurt, I have to say. Um, you do need that fat in there. Um, so that could be a problem. A good alternative, but it will change the flavour, would be something like a coconut milk um, or a coconut cream. I've just splattered it absolutely everywhere, which is always good fun um, I'm gonna put another one in so as I said four or five tablespoons of that yogurt make sure you mix each spoonful in and um, you will end up with a Bruce lovely thick has said that theirs is very watery but is using natural yogurt could that be the reason yeah so um, I, I tend to go for um, um, a thicker yogurt but the don't worry for now, if you're using a natural yoghurt, let's just see what happens when you sort of turn it down and let it simmer away and let it cook. Hopefully it will, I mean, it, it is going to be fairly um, saucy, if that's the right word. And I'm just gonna add the last bit of mine in and then I'm gonna turn that onto a low heat and I'm just going to let that simmer until it's ready and that should take probably about 20-25 minutes or so and the beauty of using a cut like this is you can just leave it to simmer until it's really really tender okay so that's looking pretty good to me I'm going to show you what it looks like now and then what I'm going to do is just reduce the heat and let that simmer away until we're ready. Can you see that? That's what we're looking for. Right, so the lid goes on there and I'm going to pop that onto a different hob just for it to simmer and cook. Now with Indian food, I will always say this, low, slow cooking is the best kind of cooking. Um, you could add a little dash of water, or I'm not going to, but if, it, if you feel it's completely, fairly dry, and sometimes it can be, just a little splash of water in there, um, um, and that will help it to sort of simmer away and cook through. Any more questions? Is your meat on the bone? And also, someone has still got their cloves on the side, have they messed something with the meat? So the cloves need to go in, if you've still got your cloves on the side, so right at the very beginning when you heat up that oil, um, your whole spices go in, because that's your first stage of spicing, your whole spices, which are your uh, cassia bark, cardamom, black cardamom, uh, cumin, cloves, and your dried chilies, so they need to go in. If you've still got them on the side, pop them in now and it should be fine. Just let them sort of simmer through. So, and, and what was the other question? So my meat today isn't on the bone because it's neck fillet. Um, you can absolutely use meat on the bone if you've got it, if you've got some. Um, I love cooking with meat on the bone because it just does give a really lovely flavor. But for, for today, um, I'm hoping that it's going to cook a little bit more quickly so that I can show you the end result. But um, I'm not using meat on the bone, but there's no reason why you can't. Okay, so everyone happy with where we are so far? Is everybody cooking along? Everyone who is cooking along, are you all happy? I'm going to pop my spices to one side. And I'm just going to move this out the way because I'm going to show you how to make rotis. I'm just going to give this a wipe, actually, because I've had a bit of a, an accident. Okay, any more questions while I'm sort of sorting my space out? 
Right. I'm going to push where, that to one side. Where can you get spices on wine that are the most cost effective? Uh, it's really difficult. It really depends where, where you're based. So if you're looking for spices online, you know, you'll probably find there's a few retailers. I mean, I don't know where you're based, so it's quite difficult for me to tell you um, where to go or where to try. Um, I sell all of the spices that are in your spice tin um, and I sell the cashmere chili powder and all of that. So um, do have a look on the website. If there's something there that, that, that you know, is what you're looking for, then hopefully I'll be able to help you out with that. Um, okay, so first question, who knows what a roti is? Answers on a postcard. Rotis are an art form. I'm going to wash my hands while you're coming back to me. Absolutely, that's exactly what they are. So rotis are rotis are a flatbread, um, and we tend to have them with most of our dishes. So my family come from the north of India, um, in the Punjab region, and Every meal that we would have, we'd always have rotis with it because they're just delicious. So I'm going to show you how to make them. Um, rotis are usually made with something or a flour that we call atta. And it's um, a flour that's ground with the whole grain, so the husk and everything. So it's not, it's not quite brown flour. It's sort of, there's different grades of atta that you can get, but it is, it is a different kind of flour. Um, so I've got some flour here and when we make rotis, it is literally just flour and water. That's it. So the first step is you just need to make your dough. And all I've got in here is my atta, my flour and some water. And I'm just going to start off by making a very quick dough with it. Now, when you are making this, and this is something that I teach in all my classes, just use one hand because if you go in with both hands you end up with two dirty hands you end up with flour everywhere so it's just good practice just use one and you add water a little bit at a time and you just make a really nice soft pliable roti dough and this was the job that i was always given as a kid to do by my mum and I hated it absolutely hated making the roti dough every night I had to make the roti dough it was just so boring and so annoying but it's actually really quite easy to do so you can already see that it's coming together and it's not so much like a bread dough that you have to work it um, you just have to make sure that it's come together really nicely. And I always say to people, when you're making your atta or your dough, you will know when it's done. It's not sticky. You haven't added too much water in there. But you end up with a clean bowl and a clean hand. What is the difference if there is any between a roti and a chapati? So roti and chapati... Um, they're, they're essentially the same word, oh sorry, they're essentially two different words for the same thing, but different people will call a chapati something slightly different. So we call these rotis, and that's what I was brought up calling them, but English people would always call them chapatis. So I always assumed that the English word for a roti was a chapati. But when you go to different parts of the world, um, people do call them chapatis if they've added a little bit of oil to them. And, and a lot of that is just cultural. It's just differences with how food has moved around the globe. But for me, a roti and a chapati essentially are the same thing. But what I want to show you is this. This is what you want. It's almost like Play-Doh. It's a really lovely, soft, pliable dough but it's not sticky it's not stuck um, to my hands are there alternatives for flour? um if you can't get our flour one of the things that i quite
quite often tell people is if you use half a wholemeal flour and half a plain flour and mix them up, you'll end up with essentially the right sort of consistency for, for adda flour. So that's a good thing to do. I will show you the difference. So I've just had a question come through. So what is the difference between cassia bark and cinnamon? Um, cassia, as I showed you earlier, is it essentially looks like the outer bark of a tree would like. Cinnamon, if I show you from my here, Did we have a little issue? Are we back? Everybody's still with me? Let me know if you're still here. Apparently we had a little buffer situation going on. Okay, so the dough's done. I just wanted to introduce you to this. Who knows what this is? Please let me know, give me a shout. So this is what we use practically every day for all of our um, Indian dishes. Who knows what it is? I'm not going to tell you until I get some answers. Any answers coming through? Yeah. Tava, tava. 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 So this is an Indian griddle pan and what's quite unique about it is if you look at the shape of it, it's got that concave shape. Um, so this is what we use to make our rotis on and the reason that they are so good is that it's a very thin cast iron pan which means that you can control the temperature of it really really easily um, those of you who are cooking can you go back to your lamb and have a quick look i'm just going to give mine a little stir it's looking beautiful really lovely color i am happy with that oh it smells amazing as well now into that i'm going to add a little splash of water just to Help it along, but it's looking really good. Okay, so if you haven't got a griddle pan, a frying pan will do. So I'm gonna get that on the hob first of all, and I want to get that nice and evenly heated through. So what you want to do to make your roti is once you've got your dough, you need to make a ball with it. And what I tend to do is I'm pressing quite hard so that we get a lovely ball. And then I'm gonna just put a little bit of flour on it. And I'm gonna flatten it out. And I use this part of my hand just to flatten it. And I pass it through just so you get this lovely round shape. Now, can you see what I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do is, with my rolling pin, just go forwards and backwards. I'm going to put slightly more weight on one side, and what will happen is my roti, which is this bit, will start to rotate round. The aim is that you get a really nice, even thickness all the way through. Every time it sticks, just add a little bit more dusting to it. And we always dust the roti, not your surface area. Get it nice and thin. Because the thinner it is, the lighter and more delicious your roti will be. We then pick it up and give it a little pat of cake. And what that does is it just gets rid of any excess dry flour that's on there and it just evens out the shape. By that time, hopefully your dava will be nice and hot. Okay, so that goes straight onto my pan. If you've got a frying pan, put it straight onto your frying pan. Um, I will warn you, if you are not used to doing this, then you probably need some tongs or um, some form of implement to, to help you. But what will happen is it will very quickly start to change colour on the top. Okay, it just goes slightly darker. 
And remember, there's no oil on that pan. It's just the plain um, griddle pan, no oil, nothing. So as that starts to change colour... Where can people get a dubber? You can see little bubbles. You'll start to get little bubbles appearing on the top. Now, when you get those little bubbles, you know that you're then ready to turn it over. So I'm just going to have a look a little bit longer on that side, and I'm going to turn it over. Okay? So that's one flip. I've literally just turned it over once. And you'll see you start to get these little spots of colour appearing. Um, where can you get a dover and can you just use a regular pan? Just, if you haven't got a dover, as I said, just use a frying pan. The only problem with a frying pan is that you can sometimes just catch your wrist on it when you're sort of turning them over. But just use another pan. The other thing that's quite good for this is a crepe pan. Um, because they don't have the edge on them, so that's quite good. But you can get dover, for, you can just have a look on Amazon. Um, and you'll be able to get a, um, a dover from there. T-A-V-A -A is where you'll be able to get them from. Okay, so you start to get bubbles appearing again. And you'll see it just starts to change colour a little bit more. And you know the other side's cooked through. So to look at the other side, you've got slightly darker spots. Now this is where the fun bit comes in. So once you're at this stage, you then take your pan off the heat and you put your roti directly on the flame. And that's where you get the magic. Look at that beautiful, puffed up, it's like a little pillow. And that is your roti, okay? And then we're going to smear that with butter and then you have that as your side bread. So do you want me to yeah. show you again? If you have electric, it is a little bit more tricky. Um, do you want me to show you another one? If you do, just give me a shout out and I'll show you another one. If, you... if you've got an electric um, hob, what, you'll obviously then be doing this on a, with a frying pan because these pans don't sit on electric hobs or um, because, they're, because of the shape of them, they won't sit flat. So what you want to do in, in those situations, I can show you another one. I'll show you exactly what you need to do for that. And can you use all-purpose flour? You can use all-purpose flour, um, which is just a plain flour. Um, and a lot of people tend to use that. Um, it sh you should get the same results. Obviously, if you, can, if you can mix a little bit of wholemeal flour into it, it is, it is better. Okay, I'll show you. This is how you do it if you have an electric hob. So there are always ways and means to do it. So roll out your roti. The key bit is that your roti blows up because what happens is the two sides of that roti then fill up with hot air and it's the hot air inside that's then cooking the inside of it. If, you, if it's still flat, you'll get sort of raw bits and, and raw bits of flour in there and dough. Okay, so you've rolled out your roti. Can you, use flour? you can't use chickpea flour for this. If you use chickpea flour, you will get much more of a batter. You will never ever get a dough with chickpea flour. Um, but what you can do with chickpea flour is essentially make something very similar to a pancake. We call them jille. So we do use chickpea flour, but it's more of a, a pancake. Um, they're lovely. They're not rotis, they're very different. Um, so you absolutely, you can use chickpea flour. So if you have an electric hob, you put your frying pan on, you make your roti in exactly the same way and you put it onto your frying pan. Now, I will say that this, you know, I have been doing this all my life, so it's not the easiest thing in the world. There is a little bit of, you know, I sort of, I don't know how to describe it, but you get a bit of a feeling for when it needs to be turned over um, because I've made them, I, it, it's just instinctive. Um, so don't beat yourself up if you try it and they don't come out all puffy and light and delicious and airy because, you know, it's, it's a new skill that you're picking up, but do give them a go because they are amazing. Can you just, sorry, go over the cinnamon stick and cassia bark again? I'll talk about the cinnamon stick and the cassia bark in a sec. Once I've, once I've done this, I'll come back to that question. 
So, same principle. Once you start to get the little pockets or little bubbles of air puffing up, it means the other side is starting to cook through. So you just need to keep an eye on it and then you turn it over. So that's one flip, okay? And keep it moving. What I need to do is get a clean tea towel. So this is if you have electric, an electric cooker at home and that's what you're using and you're using your frying pan. So you'll see, once you've flipped it over, it'll start to puff up again. Someone but said obviously... <laughs> don't start a fire please so you'll see it's starting to bulge up already you can see that it's starting to cook through so what I'm going to do is a second flip and then using my tea towel I'm just going to very gently start to press it and you'll see you get the same effect so it puffs up beautifully like that so you just need a tea towel just to press it down and what that does is it just cooks those little bits inside and allows the air, the hot air, to, to, to mix in and cook the inside of it. But there you go. So you can do it on an electric cooker. So those are my rotis. Any other questions? Oh, so I had a question about the cinnamon again. So the difference between cinnamon and cassia bark is that cinnamon is um, cinnamon more expensive because it's it's um, the the labour that's required to make the cinnamon sticks into quills is much more um, time consuming. So cassia bark is the outer bark of the cassia tree. Cinnamon is the inner um, shavings essentially of the of the cassia tree. You can sub one for the other. Um, I tend to use cin um, I tend to use cassia bark mainly because cinnamon looks like a cigar with sort of waves of of the um, the bark, whereas um, cassia bark is much thicker, much more wood like, um, and much more solid. So that's my rotis done. I'm going to come back to my lamb which should pretty much be looking and smelling and tasting beautiful who said you can't cook curry really quickly at home okay so I'm just going to check this lamb it smells amazing but I will tell you that as I said at the beginning, it is very, very different to the stuff that you're used to. Now, if you prefer a thicker gravy, then you can start this whole process by using onion at the beginning, and that will thicken out the sauce. But as I, I did say that I'm showing you a very traditional um, Kashmiri style of cooking. Was the lamb simmering on heat? So the lamb is simmering very gently on, on, on a fairly low heat. What um, were so yeah, so my lamb was just sat, sat simmering away on a very gentle heat, doing what it should be doing. So I just want to show you what it looks like now. Now that's probably, I think it's probably going to take another few minutes or so. So I'd like to cook it for another 10 minutes, maybe. Um, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's done. But that's what we're aiming for, that lovely sort of um, red, rogan, red colour. Um, and it's got that beautiful aromatic sauce. Let's have a little... I'm just going to check my lamb again. See, there are... It's pretty much there, mine. So how are you guys doing? So who's cooking and how are... How is your lamb looking? Is it, is it almost there? Does it need longer? I'm assuming it's probably going to need a little bit longer just to get really nice and tender, which it will do. Have we got more questions about the mustard oil? Just how so, the research behind it. So the research that was done into mustard oil was done, I think it was back in the 70s. Um, and because a lot of Indian people cook with mustard oil, and they still do cook with mustard oil, um, it's got high levels of a specific 
acid in there that's known to damage the heart or they think it damages the heart. This research was done on rats and, and, and rodents many, many, many years ago, and it's never actually been repeated. So we don't actually know whether the, the data set was robust. Um, that said, you know, if you choose not to use mustard oil, that's absolutely fine. That, that's your choice. Um, but I get a lot of questions about mustard oil, so I've written a whole blog about it, and it's on the website. So if you go to the website, I've literally talked about you know, the, the, the problems with it, where the sort of EU regulations came from and all of that kind of stuff. So all the information is there and then you can choose whether you tend, whether you want to use it or not. Um, in some areas of India, people use it all the time. Um, I use it for specific dishes, so I don't, you know, I don't think that I consume a lot of it. Um, but, you know, you've, you've got to make those choices for yourself. Um, all the information is there. So please do have a look at the blog, have a little read. Um, I like it, I like the flavour it gives, and I will use it for this kind of dish. I will use it for um, vegetable dishes because it gives it a real kick and a real punch. The, um, the only other thing that I will say is that you can now get edible mustard oil. There's only one company that I know that do it. I have got, I'll show you. So this is edible mustard oil. Can you see? People are saying there's a company called Yandilla based in Australia. Oh, Yandilla a company in Australia who also make edible mustard oil. So, you know, do you know what? There are options now. A lot of the mustard oil or the edible mustard oil, the edible mustard oil is actually a blend of rapeseed and mustard oil. So it's 50-50 um, of the two, which makes, which means that the euric acid that's in there is at a lower volume. So normal, 100% mustard oil has something, it can be 20 to 50% of that acid, um, but because you blend it with other oils or a rapeseed oil, it reduces that amount, so it makes it a little bit more safe. I think it's something like down to two percent or something, so it makes Can it you safe use to consume. Mustard seeds instead. Um, it's not really the same thing using mustard seeds. So a lot of people ask whether you can um, blitz up mustard seeds and, and put them into oil and stuff. It's not really the same thing. Um, you can if you want to. I, I just, I, I think don't get too hung up on it. If you can't get it, if you're uncomfortable consuming it, then just use rapeseed oil. It's, it's absolutely fine. Don't, don't worry about it too much. Um, but by the same token, if you wanted to start this dish and add some mustard seeds at the beginning, then you can do that as well. But um, classically, you wouldn't put mustard seeds in this dish. So... Okay, we're going to give that a stir. So a lot of the oils that you get in the UK are, um, even the vegetable oils that you get in supermarkets are a second grade rapeseed oil anyway. Um, so there are lots of options and I just urge you not to get hung up on these little little things. Um, it, it can be really disconcerting when you buy a bottle of mustard oil and it says on the back, not for, what does it say on here? It says on here, for massage purposes, um, mustard, pure mustard oil for external use only. I don't know anyone who's going to buy that and think that's for a massage. That is purely made for use in the kitchen. So that's my 2p worth. Anyway, right, moving back to the lamb. Now, mine is looking really lovely. That sauce, it is... It's thin, like I said it was going to be, but it's got a real creaminess to it because of the yogurt that you've put in there. So I'm just going to very quickly dish that up. I've checked my lamb. Um, if I had more time, I would actually just let that simmer away for probably another 10-15 uh, minutes because I know it's going to get more and more tender the, the, the further that we go. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like just to finish off today and so that I don't keep you for any longer than I have to. So I'm just going to dish this up because it's quite important that you see what the dish looks like to finish with. And we're going to have that with some rotis as well. So if you do not like whole spices, and I know a lot of people don't, then just be mindful of what you've put in there. So, you know, you count in 
and you can count out what you've put in there. I wouldn't give anyone the cassia bark or the black cardamom because they're not essentially edible. They're just used to um, add flavour. So in my recipe, I have said you can put you put garam masala just to finish it off. Um, and you can do that, but I just, for now, I just want to show you. So a lot of people also think that all Indian dishes should be finished off with coriander. I tend not to put it in into this one. So just to finish off, look at that. So if you've got someone who really likes it hot, you can save those amazing chilies for them. So my roti is here. One of them has been stolen by my children already. So I'm just going to show you the final dish is there. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of butter there. So there you go. That is my lamb Rogan Josh with a homemade roti all done. And uh, you can just sit back. And what time is it now? Well, just after seven. So who says that you have to order an Indian food from a takeaway? You don't, you can cook it at home. Um, I'll take some pictures and I'll post them later so you can have a look. Um, if anybody's got any questions, keep the questions coming in. Um, I will continue to answer them like I always do. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had fun. I hope I've broken up a little bit of the mundaneness that has been the last few weeks. We will be doing this again next week and I think I'll finalise it, but I think I might make a butter chicken for you next week. So for those of you who don't know what a butter chicken is, I think most people do. Murgmakni, it's a classic um, North Indian dish with a really creamy, delicious sauce. My kids love it, which is why they're all jumping around in the background. So I'll do a butter chicken for you. Um, I'll share all the information like I did this time. Please let me know if you've enjoyed it. Please let me know if you've had fun. Please let me know if you've learned anything. And obviously, give me loads of feedback. Tell me what else you want me to do, um, because I will try and incorporate all of that into, into the next session. Um, stay well, stay safe, stay at home, um, and I will try and help you with lots of new ideas over the week. So please do give us a follow. Um, share the YouTube channel with your friends and family. We are almost hitting... 10,000 subs, which is not 10,000, 100,000. They're all shouting at me in the background. 100,000 um, subs. We want to get that going. Um, so please do share it with your friends and family, anyone who you think has a little bit of love for Indian food. Um, we'd love to get them on board and we'd love to see more of you. So thank you for tuning in to the Friday Curry Club. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had fun. And Oh, I've been told I need to taste it. I should taste it, really. I, you, I normally do. Let's, I'm going to have a little bit of the sauce because otherwise I'll be... Che oh, no, there's a little bit of meat there. Ah That's really good. I'm not going to say it's horrible, but it is actually really good. It's got a real, it's got a real kick to it. So with Indian food, you always need to know that you've had a little bit of Indian food. It needs to have that warmth, that kick, that aromatics. And it's actually quite light, which is the way Indian food should be. It's not about overpowering and so on. So please do give it a go. Try it. Try it the way that it should be. And then add your own little tweaks to it. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've, I've enjoyed it. I've had fun. Um, get back to my wine now and then um, I'll be happy. So see you later. Take care and thank you so much for tuning in. See you next week.